start the recording. Isn't it nice to have Eric back live with us this morning? So glad to have you. And Eric, I think you can even turn yourself up a little bit. Turn it up a little bit? It was overpowering the... Oh, was it overpowering? Okay, then we're okay. That sounds good. So I want to make sure everybody can hear. Can everybody hear the piano well? Did everybody hear that? Okay. Sounds good. Okay, wonderful. Yep, I will stay near the mic, I promise. <laughs> that is my job today. Well, thank you all for spending this time in worship together. Even though we all can't be together in body, we are together in spirit. Welcome to all who found us and are joining us both online and together here in this beautiful place. Indeed, let us gather together and let us worship. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land on their own land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge these lands upon which we worship as the ancestral, cultural, traditional, and unceded lands of the Wabanaki Confederacy. We commit ourselves to the work of dismantling the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism.
For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God. We are indeed kin together in God's love and called not to be separate from one another. Jesus' parables, stories that poke us and wake us up to the separateness that we live, those parables invite us, no, they really demand of us to live lives of unity with all people and all creation in the oneness of God. The kingdom of God is not static. It's not homogeneous. It's not limited to what we know for what we, and what we are comfortable with. The kingdom of God is diverse and contains what we have known, what is known now, and what we don't yet understand. Just as God is still speaking, so the kingdom of God is always being created. Some of the ways we have shown the love of God still work for us today. Some we have found no longer do. Some never did. We leave some behind, we keep some, and we bring in the new. We create the beloved community of God. Let our lives and this worship be directed to that love so that we may together create the kingdom of God. Let's stand together if you are able and want to and sing Lead On, O Cloud of Presence. It's true, we usually don't stand now, do we? <laughs> Gracious God, indeed, we come as your people journeying, as your people not knowing and yet trusting in you. God, fill our lives with this trust. Give us your courage to be your people in whatever time we are in and be filled with your love. All this we ask in your name. Amen. One of the crazy parts of moving is figuring out what to keep and what to give away. I've done this 19 times now, so I can speak from, let's just say, some experience. And you're always trying to envision that next place that you're going to be, um, even if you don't know what it's going to be, and sometimes even if you do. And what of my stuff would fit and what I just need to get rid of and don't want to live among anymore. How will it feel, and how will it make my place feel right? I once knew people who built their house around their current furniture. 
Can you imagine that? They measured their current furniture, and that's the, the layout, especially of their living room that they used. And when I met them, um, the wife of the, um, of the pair wanted a new um, sofa. And the husband's like, we can't. We built the house around the furniture, you know? Um, that it didn't, let's just say it didn't go well um, for that. Um, but because I don't know about you, but I don't have the same sofa that I had 10 years ago, which is lucky because it was a hand-me-down that my mother had had for about 25 years, so I was glad to let it go. But the question for us is how can we build flexibility in our lives so that we cherish what has stood the test of time and welcome the new? And so this poem I don't know if it gives us any answers, but it certainly asks the good question and gives us a wonderful visual image to think on that. So if you would, ground yourself on whatever ground you are on, be that dirt or your floor in your home, and ground yourself in your seat, in your dining room, on your sofa, here on folding chairs. And find your breathing. At this time when respirations cause fear, let us know that our breathing, the spirit, the in and out of God in our lives will never bring us harm. And it joins us together as God's people. The mind must set itself up wherever it goes, and it would be most convenient to impose its old rooms, just tack them up like an interior tent. Oh, but the new holes aren't where the windows went. Loving God, you do not give us static lives. You do not tell us that where your windows and doors are now is where they will always be. Our life is our lives of change. And God, you are present there with us. You are there with us sometimes when we miss our old windows and when we can't bear to look out the new. God, show us that it's your view that we see out every window. And may our eyes see the amazing world that is before us. All this we ask in your name. Amen.
I close enough? Yeah. Okay. Alinka, just a caution. It's coming across. much, Ellie and John. Thank you so much for that. All right, children, I know I usually have you come forward, but we can't do that. <laughs> so stay where you are. How's that? And I'll just look for you. Does that sound good? I have a question, though. I'm so glad there's kids. I'm usually talking to myself, it feels like. So what is the oldest thing you own? Do you know what the oldest thing you own is? Your dog? How old is your dog? Fourteen. Fourteen. That is old. <laughs> Holy cow, that's older than you. Wow, that's impressive. Do you guys know what your oldest thing is back there? No? How about a baby blanket? Does anybody still have a blankie that they love? Is that probably, because you probably got that when you were born, right? <laughs> you bet, that's what I thought about um now the question is do you you probably don't even remember when you were two years old do you we don't remember that very well but do you play with the same toys last year that you do this year or do you have new toys what do you have yeah you? do you have some new toys yeah you get new things, right? We get them for a birthday or for Christmas, maybe, or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about your baby blankets, actually, that you guys might have, your blankies or whatever you call it. I remember when my daughter was born, she, somebody gave her a Noah's, Noah's Ark blanket, and it looked huge. 
You know, we could have fit like six of her under it, right? And it was just a baby blanket, right? But then as she got bigger and bigger and insisted on keeping it, and I saw it in a box the other day, we still have it. Oh my, she doesn't use it, thank goodness. She didn't have to take it to college, which was great. But now it looks so tiny. When I folded it up the other day, I'm like, oh my goodness, there's like, it's so little, you know, because she's now, you know, five feet, six inches tall or something like that. But, and I'll bet some of you that still have blankies, they look smaller and smaller all the time, don't they? And they're not shrinking, are they? You y'all are growing, right? <laughs> now, it, think about your toys. Are there some old ones that you still play with that you just don't want to let go? Yeah, right? Your parents make you go through them, right? And you're like, no, I can't get rid of that one. Oh, yeah, that one I know. No, I can't get rid of that one. Books. How about the same way with books? Even some of your, what we used to call your baby books, right? You still keep, right? You just love them, right? Because just because something's new doesn't mean it's better, right? It's good, but maybe it's not better. And just because something's old doesn't mean it's better either. We got to kind of figure out, you know, what do we like? Um, because we can like a lot of things, and it's okay. And that's the way God loves us and wants us to love others. God doesn't say, oh, when a new baby comes into the world, oh, I love this baby best, and all you older people, forget about it. I'm going to love the baby the best. God doesn't say that. God loves everybody. I'm looking around and seeing, I, you know, I don't want to call anybody out here, but thinking, who's our oldest person here today? <laughs> It was supposed to be Francis. Ron and Francis were going to try to be with us today, and then she wins at almost 105. She just wins everything. But we've got some, some people who have a few years on them. Let's put it that way, right? And then our youngest, who's our youngest? How old? Five? And five, oh, we got two five-year-olds. All right. Those are our youngest here. But isn't it wonderful that we can be all ages, right? And God loves us all the same that there's no one who's loved better, and so it doesn't matter if we're old or young, we can still be all loved, and God asks us to do that for other people too, to love new friends and old friends, right, and to just love everybody. So let's pray. Gracious God, while it is exciting when we get something new, we also love some of our old. Help us to remember that you love all the old and the new, and you find good in everything. Help us to do that as we love each other. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Like a child love would send to reveal and to mend. Like a child and a friend Jesus comes. Like a child we may find, claiming heart, soul, and mind. Like a child strong and kind, Jesus comes. Like a child born to pray and to show us the way. Like a child here to stay, Jesus comes. Like a child we receive all that love can conceive. Like a child we believe, Jesus comes. Our scripture reading this morning is still from the book of Matthew 13, and we are up to three verses this week, y'all. I just want to tell you I was home and my dad was teasing me. He's like, I'm really liking those one-verse scripture readings, Christy. <laughs> so, but we're, we're up to three now. <laughs> so, so let's hear God's word for us today. After Jesus has been telling the disciples parables, he said, Have you understood all of this? And the disciples answered, oh, yes. And Jesus said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out the treasure, what is new and what is old. Then Jesus had finished these parables and he left that place. May God bless these words to our living. This story about the kingdom, and I see I left, I think I maybe left the G in um, our reading this week, but 
in the kingdom talks about scribes and treasures of old and new. And I just want to start with this idea of scribe because that's such an old word. Um, sometimes I hear it um, when we're in meetings. Oh, who's going to be the scribe? You know, and they, it makes it sound like a noble profession rather than who's going to take notes, right? Um, but scribes, when we think about it, I don't know about you, but the image I, of course, came to was like the medieval scribe who was sitting there by candlelight, you know, making those illuminated texts and copying the for word for word, you know, and things like that. But I think we've got that wrong. And they're figuring that out. Scribes were not just people who copied. They were people who interpreted. And they did their own ways. They, they also saw words maybe in an old text that weren't used anymore and they would change them sometimes and you you find differences between texts and you realize they were they were taking some liberty which we wanted them to do we want them to take the liberty of making it meaningful for our lives they were as much interpreters in a way that they could again with the language and what approach it was uh, they took to make that text come alive and they needed to because um, the text that the New Testament was written in is called Koinonia Greek, and it's not a Greek that is spoken anymore. It's considered a dead language. Um, and it's, we study it all the time, but there's no life to it anymore. It's all the life that we give it, because it doesn't change. It is, stays the same. So it must be translated and interpreted every day. Because in our own language, words live and words die, don't they? And they even change meanings, and words are invented. You know, I, I asked my grandmother, who turned 97 this year, um, some years ago when she turned 90, you know, Grandma, what are the words that you'd never heard of that now you use every day? And she said, well, computer, you know, that was the first one. But she said, there's just so many ways that we describe things even now. She said that I would never have thought. She said, actually, the word that I use the most now, she was hilarious. She's funny. She says, now I use bathroom instead of outhouse. Because when she was born, they had an outhouse. And she said, we had to change that word in our vocabulary um, once they built one in the house, of course. And new words are invented also then, but words change meaning. And I think about the word queer. A number of years ago, that was always considered an insult, wasn't it? First it was this, you're kind of funny or strange or something like that, or something's not quite, you know, some, some thing is not quite right. Then it became an insult toward people. And then our LGBTQ plus um, people among us said, oh no, we're going to take this word and we're going to reclaim it. And it's going to be who we are too and it's been amazing in my own lifetime to watch that change to go from a word that was in my time at least really an insult to one that was an empowering this language is amazing and that's one thing that scribes get to do and you're a scribe that is in this story it says are trained and readied for the kingdom of heaven to know that faith and the work of faith is not about just slathering a static faith on a new day, but it's about sorting through what's there and having an eye even on what's being developed. That to me is interesting. I'm always interested when they talk about what new word, um, new words they're going to put in the dictionary, as if we have a dictionary anymore, <laughs> right? A big book. And which ones get retired, get that obsolete um, uh, word next to it. It's pretty amazing. And those are our two tasks that are talked about today in this scripture also. Because that's the task of our life, is sorting the old and keeping the new and bringing in the new. And in the sorting of old, some of us have done this. And some of us have done this very lately as we've changed homes. And some of us are doing that right now. And sorry if that's making you a little twitchy as you're thinking about the drawers and closets that you still have to go through, right? Some of us are doing it on a small level. If we're really good, you know, we say, okay, this month I'm going to clean out that closet or I'm going to hit that drawer or that many boxes in the basement that have been there 20 years and we never opened when we moved the last time. 
We do it at certain ages with children. They get to a certain place. Usually it's when there's toys in every single room in the house. Am I wrong on this? And then you go, all right, everybody, we've got to sort, you know? When there's no room left on the bookshelf, you're like, well, I could get another one or we could actually sort some things through. There may even be a few of us, um, a few among us who are minimalists. And I admire you, whoever you are, okay? Um, Allie and I don't know that. No, we don't, we don't. We didn't get that gene. I am very certain of that. But who allow nothing extraneous in the house. I did have a friend who you could swear she, if, if she could have had a Japanese house, she would have been perfectly happy. Nothing came in that house that didn't correspond with something leaving that house. It was amazing. It was just amazing. Sometimes we sort willingly, and sometimes we enjoy it because we're getting married or buying a house or sharing it with somebody, and you don't need two crock pots and two blenders and two of everything, right? Sometimes we do it and it breaks our hearts. It's a divorce. It's a death of a loved one. It's a downsizing because at this time in our life, it's better if we have a smaller place with less things. But of course, how do you know what of the old to keep? The question I wonder for that is, and I know we have that, the one woman who wrote the book, I even own the book now, and it's supposed to, you're supposed to ask yourself, does it bring me joy? Well, I can say that for just about everything I own, thank you very much, so that doesn't help me. <laughs> but the question that I think God asks us, and that this story, this parable asks us, is does it keep you in the same place that you have always known? Does it ask you to just replicate your life? Now I think we've all been to historic homes and yet all these historic homes have been retrofitted. They've been retrofitted with electricity, most of them sprinkler systems, that's why they allow us in, right? And my favorite, fire exits. Some even have air conditioning, which I really appreciate. Our own sanctuary was not as it was built, because it was built in 1798. And I would not to want to worship in a building that was as is from 1798. I like to be warm and not smell like smoke by the end of it, right? I like lights, electricity, and the Wi-Fi that lets us Zoom worship, not to mention bathrooms, right? Now, we know the organ isn't original. I don't even think the cross is original. The piano is definitely not original. And yet, we find that a wonderful place to be when we can be there. And we say it's good to do changes like that, that that building can live and grow and have new meaning. But what do we keep of what we ha of have? and not be held back by it? And are we willing to ask ourselves that question and those questions? Even among us now too, the work of the deacons has moved to a new place because we're no longer in a place. Faith exploration doesn't look the same, and yet the exploration of faith continues. I remember years ago when I was at a rummage sale and I picked up some silver silverware set, you know, that actually had silver on it, and a woman from my church saw me do it and she said, now how are you going to have time to polish all that silverware? And I said, I'm not polishing any silverware, there's no way. Um, and she gave me one of those looks like I had no idea how to run a house. And she went on my don't invite over for dinner list, trust me. <laughs> But I thought about that, and obviously that stayed with me all these years, that she was expecting me to come up to a certain level of standard that I would say my grandmother kept. I remember my grandmother polishing her silver. I remember my mother taking out her silver and going, yeah, no, and <laughs> just closing it and putting it away. Because she didn't ever have to do what I did, that woman in my church. She didn't have to work two jobs at the same time and raise a child on her own. So there was no time to polish silver. What expectations are attached to the old? Some old things come with no expectations, or even better, they come with freedom. 
<laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> But is that, isn't it fun when something old comes with freedom? That you're able to reinterpret it and give it new life and do things in a new way? The freedom to be reminded without being burdened. The freedom for more voices to be heard that comes with those good, hard, old questions that have not been answered. Those are treasures that we can bring out again and again. These stories that we read are old treasures that we bring out again and again. Those are the questions for antiques. But the second question is, how do we determine the value of the new? How do we know what has staying power and what is a flash in the pan? How do we know the difference between a pet rock and solar panels. You all remember pet rocks, right? I think I was in junior high or something like that when those came out. And all the rage, and I thought, this isn't going to last long, and it didn't. It asks us hard questions about purpose. The purpose of a pet rock was to make a few people a lot of money in a short period of time around Christmas one year. Solar panels, however, change the way we power our lives. They move us from non-renewable to renewable. They move us from using up resources to using a non-degradable resource. New is hard. New can be very hard. New can even be very easy. And people like the new sometimes, especially when all it does is toss us easy questions with really easy answers. But the new should also make us uncomfortable uncomfortable, and yet we have to see that it also gives life to people. I remember my senior year in high school, I took a typing class. Oh my goodness. It, the only class that they had for typing at that time, of course, was a secretarial class. So I learned how to make, do all the letter forms, you know, in the correct way, and you know, where to place my hands on home row and all of that. And we used a manual typewriter to learn on. That's what I did. It was 1982-83, and I'm working on a manual typewriter. Now, over a decade before that, my parents had bought an electric typewriter. So I had to use a manual at school and go home and practice on an electric every night. And that is the same year my father also bought his first computer. You ready for this one? A VIC-20. Does anybody remember those by Commodore? It had a tape machine with it for storage. You've got to love it. And I mentioned this to my typing teacher. She did not appreciate this, needless to say. But I said I was not planning on being a secretary. I just needed to type papers for college. And she had nothing for me except an expectation that I would type 80 words a minute, which I never have been able to do. By my senior year in college, I had one of two computers on campus. I could not have to worry if I made a mistake as I was typing, because I could delete, 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 and change it. What do we really need? And what was the purpose? The purpose of that typing class that I had to take in college was to train, especially women, I don't think there was a single guy in that room, right, for a career that would soon end. Because for the most part, I, I can't tell you how many times in my work I've had to do my own typing for everything. It's nice now to be able to turn some work over to admin, <laughs> admin people, I'll have to admit. But we do all our own typing now. And on computers, not things that you have to have a lot of finger strength to, to move. Does it make us ready for the new? That is the question of the new. Does, does this even make us ready for things that we don't even know are coming yet? That's the new we need to hold on to. We can get really concerned about the new. It makes us uncomfortable. But when we're concerned about ourselves being uncomfortable, are we leaving others out? Are we leaving others out that for them, this is freedom and welcome and inclusion? Think about that if we just left things as is. We wouldn't have the third woman as a vice presidential candidate. The first black woman at a major party. I did the math. There were no women nominated 
um, for the major parties for 208 years in this country. And we've now had three in 36 years. And if Pete had been um, elected, um, we would have had our first first gentleman too. Think of how close we are to this, you all. So close. And we're not even talking about when does the first transgender person not only enter Congress, but become our president. What new norms now around gender have allowed us and allowed other people to have these freedoms? And what freedom is now possible for all of us because of this? The new challenges are old, and that's good, too. Because what, if what has been passed down can't stand in the face of the new and match the new in hope, love, and freedom, then we celebrate it and say goodbye, thanking it for its work that it's done, but only retaining that which does not suffocate, what does not demand that we forget new lessons. We're doing this new now, and it's wonderful. Think about our question now for us, really, is in this COVID time, what has it questioned about our old? And what new do we need to keep when we get back to our new normal? You can't go through something like this and be the same. If we do, we have not learned any lessons. And so what are those lessons that we as people and as a congregation are going to learn? It's actually exciting. It makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. The ideas that we could do some new. So let's bring it all out into the light. That's what I like about this story too. This, this um, person in charge of the household, the head of the household, brings out everything, the old and the new, so everyone can see. And I don't think I have talked enough about how that would make people mad. People, you're just supposed to bring out the valuable is the old, not the new. That's just the, you know, stuff you could still buy at the market, right, if you needed to. But this person is saying, no, I'm going to do both. And this is going to be important to us. And we're going to have to talk about those both. And we're going to have to figure out what it's both. And he was putting himself on the line to say, this is what I've inherited, even if inheritance was yesterday. That is our good questions and good struggles. Because even if we have to let something go, God is present in all of it. And God looks at us and says, it is good. Let us together do that work and reshape this kingdom of God with the old and the new. Let's pray. Gracious God, for all the work that we have done, for all the sorting that we've done in our lives, the questions that we've asked ourselves, we are thankful, even though we're glad we're not, maybe not doing it right now. But we're thankful for the way that we had to look and be challenged, that we had to let things go and make open space so that the new could enter. God, let us celebrate the old and make space for the new, for all its gifts from you, God. All this we ask in your name. Amen.
and let's sing together, Lead Me, Guide Me. That The words are just printed in your bulletin, and we'll sing it um, twice through. You're welcome to stand, because this is one that we should move a little bit on. <laughs> As I said be earlier, graduation is happening for Courage House. People are finding new ways and healing in this world, and we celebrate um, that achievement that they have done and the small part but important part that we can play in being part of that. So thank you to all for supporting them. Do you remember that was over a, a year ago now? Almost a year ago this fall, right? when we stood up as a church and said we are going to support these men and this mission here in the community and I am so glad that we do that and have continued with that so thank you for becoming mission um, even when it is just right across the street and again thank you to all for your gifts and your continued giving the basket is here if you're with us here um, and uh, and so much that we can do as people of gifts and giving to this world. we have and all that we are we give today this day and every day all that we are all that we have all that we are God mold into your people of love take these gifts and make them your love in this world all this we ask in your name amen let us gather together now as we've shared joys and concerns and I won't be able again to use names, um, but we're thinking of, well, we can say our folks in West um, Wolfboro, actually, um, from the storm, um, those in Des Moines, um, those who are 
um, home and those who have a new home and those who have made home together for 50 years. We celebrate all of those today. Let's gather together and let us worship. Loving God, we come to you this day in this beautiful place, in places that we call home. Some of our places we can gather with others, with distant. Some of our, in those places we are surround, surrounded by families. And some of those places we are alone. We think especially this morning of our loved ones who are at Gorham House, who have added week after week of being in that place for the visits that they're able to have with families, for the careful ways and caring ways of the staff, we are thankful. But may they know too that we do not forget them even though they are apart from us. That we look forward to that time of gathering together and also celebrate the gathering of hearts and spirits that we can do together as we think of them. And we think of our world this morning, God, a world that we may have a picture in our head from, from pictures from space. We may think of places in this world that we have been that are so different from our own. But God, as this world is indeed this pale blue dot that is amazing, it is also every single person that is here that calls earth their home. And we think of all of those this morning, even though our minds are not big enough or wide enough, it seems for that, t that task. But we can open ourselves, God, to imagine the diversity, the beauty, the amazingness of your creation here on earth. God, for those people who can celebrate as we do today, who celebrate in their own language, in their own way, in a name that they have for you, God, we are thankful for those who are hiding, God, for those who are hiding in plain sight, for those who have lost home to explosion or war, to those who have just lost home. God, may we work together as your people in this world so that all are homed so that all have a safe home. We think of those among us, God, too, for home, where home is not safe, for children who are concerned about being harmed or not having enough food, for people who are suffering in the midst of domestic violence. God, may we put our effort, our energy, our money towards solving those problems, from bringing healing and relief to those situations. For all the words and money spent on so many other things, may we focus on those which bring life to people's lives. God, for all that we are called to do here in this town, for the people, strangers or friends that we are called to reach out to, for the ways that we have done for a long time that we can show that we care, and for the new ways that you are calling us to. God, let us have the courage to bring both out all the time and to be your people of love and care. For the ways that you will care, ask us to do that caring in our own lives, ways that will surprise and scare us, May we know your presence and find in that your love and our growth. God, hear us now in the joyous thing that we get to do. Say words together that speak your love and promise. And hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us. Loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
And let us join together and sing our final hymn, I Shall Not Be Moved. this week for the new that will come in and surprise us. Let us be thankful for it all and know God's peace is in it and with us now and always. Amen. We're the old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing your daughter with us. Speaker. So much better. 
I can. Thank you. Yep, and you can talk to him now. You're. Are you? I think you're still on. So uh, there you go. Thank you. Al, peace be with you. Oh, it's good to see you. It's good, great to zoom with you. I hope you're doing well. Yep, we are. We're being careful. Our daughter is coming to visit, so we're great. Um, we're quarantining. <laughs> yeah, we'll quarantine with her for 14 days. And when when is she arriving? Wednesday. 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 Hey, she's staying for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Ten days. Ten days. Nice. Some some uh, you'll be able to. Uh, be outside a bit and enjoy some summer main time. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We'll be at camp. We'll go to camp. Yeah, yeah. good. And now is that on? Is that on water or near water? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. We're looking forward to it. Great. Now what? <laughs> now we what, miss our children. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so hard. I, I you know I've had to uh, tell my my siblings uh, they can't come. <laughs> you know. They, yeah. Yeah, and I know. I'm usually spends a few weeks from Texas. She usually comes here during the summer for a few weeks. So. Yeah, it's hard to miss them. So you appreciate them more, don't you? <laughs> Since, uh, yeah. Tony, you're looking great. Rose, what do you think about Wednesday? I was looking. I'm gonna go by Wednesday. Yeah. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. All right. Let's check with B and Christine. Peace be with you, Hal. I think, I think Christine might have been open to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because she's got this written here. I don't know if it's us or. All right. Let's say that's what it is, unless we hear otherwise. We'll confirm by email too. Good to see you. Thanks for all your trouble here. Oh, no trouble at all. It's wonderful. So we're going to do it again next week. And I was thinking after we got started, since the where the microphone is, yeah, I had set the, the amplifier up here because I thought maybe somebody was going to plug a microphone into it, one of the, one of the, oh, the, okay. uh, the voice microphones. And if it were, if the amplifier isn't in front of it, you can't see back. But since it's not being used for an amp for an amplifier, maybe I should put the chair back there. Eric, the way in the you back. know better than I. I'm Hello. not real sure about these things. Just to say thank you for oh. what you continue doing with him. We went through a memorial service on State Street yesterday. And of course, they're doing a different kind of thing. Yeah. But the music was no, I did not. Was traditional and some contemporary. But it didn't have the vitality. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think if it's back there, then it can be louder. Everybody can hear it, and yeah. it won't be near the microphone. And the feedback I was getting from the Zoom people was that it seemed a little too loud and like we were overpowering. But I think that's just because we were close to the microphone. Maybe we can back off a little and keep it loud so everyone here can hear. Right, that's what I mean. If, I'm yeah. it, if I put it like way, way over there behind me. And then see this, because I'm behind the amplifier, I can't hear. That's why I needed the second one in order to hear uh, my own playing. And I wouldn't need that. I could right. just put it back there yeah. and it would all be in front of it and it would be further And I the think the comment I was getting was off of that mic not so much like the music yeah. so i think i was just maybe a little too close with this to that amp right maybe. right so if i just move that amp away I think that may make the okay oh, well we have next week weather permitting thank you Oh, good. Okay, so what's the 
Okay, I feel safe about it, but I actually need it, so I'm going to bring it back <laughs> this week anyway. But. Doesn't that stink, huh? <laughs> well, good for you that you need yeah. it, you know. I'm okay with that. I'm, Jim asked me to bring that tripod home, but I'll bring it back. Okay, sounds or good. This, this tripod, tripod. Yeah. okay. Yep. I need my computer at church, so that's all, right. all in the power cord. Does Wednesday work for you at 6? Was this your note about that uh, when we were talking about... No, the, that's the... Um, that's the uh, Chamberlain's, actually. <laughs> oh. And I was waiting because I'm supposed to have a finance committee meeting or something like that. That's oh, okay. to see what that's Looking called. at the weather, I think Wednesday at 6 might work. But okay. you don't have to be there if it conflicts. Okay. But, you um, know. Well, that's good to know. Then I can make other plans. Let me go get my marker back. Did you talk to B and um, I talked to Rose. She was good with it. I have not had a chance to talk to B. Because everything's staying. Oh, it is. Ellie did it. Ellie did it in uh, one color ink and two colors. Woohoo! All the new. <laughs> oh. She forgot her markers, but we uh, we did it. Oh man, I forgot about the recording. Stopping it. 